This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome in. Hope you're having a fabulous start to your day before Friday. Yeah. I'm Rebecca Smith. That's exciting, isn't it? It yeah. is so great to think about. <laughs> Rise and shine. I'm Bill Bryant. We have a lot going on today. Now at 6 o'clock, some overnight storms have left some damage scattered around Lexington. You may have heard that thunder and seen the lightning. Just ahead, a live look at some of the cleanup efforts this morning. Family members continue searching for a missing northern Kentucky couple today. Also on WKYT, it's taken the country by storm, and now some Lexington businesses are going with it, cashing in on the new Pokemon Go game. We have a few showers, a couple of realms of thunder back toward eastern Kentucky, but the main focus is back west, because here comes a disturbance heading our direction that will give us strong, potentially severe storms later on today. I'm going to show you exactly when I expect that coming up. All right, thank you. And a batch of strong storms moving across central Kentucky uh, hit in the overnight hour. It caused a mess in Lexington at one point. It was pretty noisy last night, actually. Strong wind gusts actually took out a handful of trees around the city. It's left some roads blocked. Our Michelle Chamberlain is at the alert desk with a look at cleanup going on right now. Yeah, guys, there are scattered power outages around the city this morning, and this is why. Check out this video. This is a live look. As you can see, there's tree block in the road near UK's campus, and it's a live look from Forest Park Road. That's one of the areas where Kentucky Utilities is working to get the lights back on. Our videographer actually just told us that the lights came back on in this area we showed you a few minutes ago. And check out this other video of the storms rolling through central Kentucky overnight. There are several reports of trees and limbs down throughout the city. And this is a look at the mess caused on Parker's Mill Road. At one point, over 800 customers in Lexington were without power. Police also say overnight storms may have been a factor in a motorcycle crash in Lexington. Police say the driver lost control on Paris Pike near Kingston Road just before midnight. We're told the driver had only minor injuries. The good news is power is quickly being restored, as we told you about. KU is reporting only a handful of outages across Lexington remain this morning. Guys, back to you. All right, folks are getting back to normal, but it uh, has been a tough yep. night for some. Many losing a little sleep there as well. Right. It has been a little more than a week, and a northern Kentucky couple is still missing this morning. Robert Jones and Crystal Warner were last seen in Washington County. Police say they were murdered. Their bodies have not been found. Now another search effort will take place today. WKMT's Mark Barber is joining us at the live desk with more on this. Good morning, Rebecca. The missing couple's family and friends will start searching for them again in two hours. The Kentucky K-9 team will also be there searching the area around the home in Springfield where Robert Jones and Crystal Warner were last seen 11 days ago. Witnesses told state police they saw Craig Pennington, the couple's tenant, shoot them and take their bodies. After days of exhaustive searches, the remains still have not been found. Six days after they disappeared, Pennington was arrested and charged with murder after investigators found Warner's car near a gas station in Scott County. Friends of the couple say they were involved in Jeep clubs in the Cincinnati area. Members of those clubs are now working with state police to organize a new search. And this weekend, the tireless search teams will also expand their search to start covering some new ground. Coming up at 6.30, we'll explain why the couple's friends will start looking for their bodies in Clark County. From the Live Desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you very much. New this morning, we're tracking the investigation into an overnight shooting in eastern Kentucky. It happened about 1.30 this morning in Harlan County on Pope Hill Road off Kentucky 72. At last check this morning, dispatchers say the man who was shot is still alive. We've also learned that police have taken a woman to headquarters for questioning. We don't know if she is considered a suspect or is related to the victim. Our newsroom is still making calls this morning, and we'll be updating the story on air and on WKYT.com. A Clark County man charged with murder will face a judge today. Danny Tharp was originally charged with the assault and robbery of Jeff Adams in May. Police say Tharp cut Adams' throat and stole his wallet. But Winchester police upgraded those charges when Adams died a few days ago, or a few days later. Tharp is now charged with murder and robbery. He is scheduled to be arraigned at 11 o'clock this morning. A Montgomery County man lucky to be alive this morning after a mobile home fell on him. It happened on Sawmill Road near Jeffersonville. Neighbors say Estel Callahan was working under the home when it slipped and pinned him underneath. Uh, he couldn't hardly say anything. He was, he, he was out of breath. I mean, it was just it was crushing his chest, you know, and, and he just saying, get it off, get it off. You know, he just, he just wanted it off. 
A very close call. Emergency crews freed Callahan. They rushed him to the hospital and were told that he was released a few hours later. Callahan's daughter tells us he did not suffer any internal injuries, but is very sore. A year after a Clay County man was murdered, no arrests have been made. 68-year-old Lawrence Sizemore was found dead in his home last July. Investigators say someone killed him and then set his house on fire on Highway 577 in Sexton's Creek. Sizemore's family says they're frustrated. State police say the case is still active and they're following up on leads. We have an update this morning for you on a Whitley County church that was badly damaged in a fire last week. Church members say the fire destroyed everything inside the little Cane Creek Church of God, but most of the outside of the building can be saved. That's been determined. Members say they're now working to rebuild the inside of the church. The pastor says members are keeping a positive outlook. This is a bad thing that happened, but in one sense it was, it was God sent to maybe bring us together more. And if it's done anything, it has done that. Church members are holding their services at a pavilion next to the building until the inside of the church is finished and rebuilt. Fayette County School Superintendent Emanuel Kalka is scheduled to make an announcement this morning. He's expected to talk about a new initiative addressing achievement gaps that communities face for more than 30 years. I'll give the announcement at 10 this morning at Tate's Creek High School. Some Lexington businesses are hoping to cash in on the new Pokemon Go game. Managers of Joseph Beth Booksellers say many people have been stopping by while playing the game in that area. And because of that, they have now set up Pokemon displays to welcome the players. You know, while not everybody that comes in is, is buying something, just one person buying one thing I think makes it more than worth it. <laughs> Branches of the Lexington Public Library have also been Pokemon Go hotspots. And some other businesses like D20 Hobbies out on Southland Drive, they're also welcoming the game by setting up free Wi-Fi for Pokemon players. Now, your Zone by Zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Looking pretty good outside early this morning. I will tell you this, we look back toward the eastern zones, and that's where we still have a couple of rumbles of thunder early this morning. It's not much, and, and it's actually falling apart as it rolls toward, it gets a little bit closer toward the mountainous region. So there's the look right there. We really got to watch back toward the west, because the west is where we actually see the strongest part of this system. It's going to be heading our direction, but right now, in our region, yeah, there's just a few showers over toward the east and one little blip down south into the southern portion of Jackson County. So here's the breakdown today. Now through noontime, I'd say about a 40% chance of storms. It's not a great chance, but there is a chance you'll get a few rumbles of thunder slide on in, especially west and central zones. So keep that in mind. Then we hit the afternoon, anywhere from 2 p.m. to about 8 p.m. is when you start to see the bulk of the storms roll on through. Not everybody will see rain today, but there is a pretty good chance that some storms will pass by you. There is a marginal risk of severe weather. What does that mean for you? Well, it's for everybody, by the way. Marginal risk is the lowest end of severe weather that we can have. So it's not a great chance, but the risk is still there. I will tell you this, very confident that we'll have strong storms. A lot of lightning, heavy downpours, and also a few strong wind bursts here and there. But in terms of severe weather, you're still talking about minimal chances of that, but still something to watch. Let's talk about your Friday off into your weekend. Friday, a couple of rumbles of thunder are expected, but it's not a washout by any means. Most of us stay dry. It's at about 40%. Then we hit the weekend. A lot of things going on. Jesmond County, Franklin, Whitley, here are the Bluegrass. You have the Bluegrass Fair going on. A lot of these fairs kicking off either today or tomorrow, heading off into your weekend. Good news for you guys. Most of us stay dry this weekend. We're seeing a drying trend Saturday and Sunday, especially on Sunday. Sunday looks drier than Saturday, but nonetheless, it looks pretty good. Also, the Sweet Corn Festival there in Evans Orchard here in Lexington, just outside of downtown Lexington. Uh, that's going to be on Saturday, too, and it looks pretty good. It doesn't look all that bad there for the weekend. So as of right now, guys, you've got to watch these strong storms later on this afternoon, off into the evening hours. It should fade away. Friday, still a few storms left over, and Saturday and Sunday seeing a drying trend. However, it's not fully dry. 
So that's something to keep in mind. It's not fully dry, but we're seeing a drying trend. So hopefully as we get a little bit closer, mm -hmm. it continues to dry some things on out. But as of right now, so it can't rule out a small chance yeah. of rain. It's been looking, looking better and better, though. It as has. We get absolutely. Closer to the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Good deal. We're going to keep uh, that trend going, yeah. hopefully. Coming up on 610 on WKYT this morning. Let's bring you a little bit of traffic, see what's happening. Yeah, let's go out to Officer Don and check on things. What's happening on the roads? Hello, Don. Hey, good morning. Outer loop of Manowar down Helmsdale in the Hamburg area. There is a two-car non-injury collision. Process of clearing that right now shouldn't be a big issue. Traffic's pretty light there. Now, around the city, we're looking okay. Construction zone on Todd's Road. They're going to work there in the widening project throughout the day. Uh, but right now, it looks like uh, traffic is moving without any problems there. So get a live look outside at Lexington overall traffic flow. And now look outside at, uh, at, at traffic overall around the city. You can see uh, we're good to go right now on uh, Heronsburg Road at Corporate. That's courtesy of the Fayette Urban County Government. Uh, traffic very light through that crossover, which we will monitor that throughout the morning. Drive times holding their own. There are no surprises for us right now with no wrecks, so we'll keep you up to date. Now back here in the studio. Okay, thank you so much. We appreciate it. We can see that traffic picking up out there this yep. morning. Folks getting in there to get it done on your Thursday. We have a lot more news coming up for you here on WKYT this morning. Donald Trump is expected to name his choice for vice president tomorrow morning. We'll have a look at potential candidates after the break. Welcome back into WKYT this morning at 614. You know, it's almost convention time for mm -hmm. the Republicans and the Democrats yeah. after all these months of all the talk. And the RNC Rules Committee is expected to vote in Cleveland today on whether to allow delegates to vote their conscience at next week's convention, uh, potentially instead of Donald Trump. Well, the development comes amid mounting speculation over who the presumptive Republican nominee will announce as his running mate tomorrow. Brian Webb has the latest from the campaign trail. Donald Trump says he's whittled down his vice presidential picks to two ahead of his big announcement. Appearing on Fox News, he hinted at who his VP might be. I want to pick somebody who's solid, who's smart. Uh, I'm not looking for an attack dog. Former House Speaker Newt Gingrich indicated the choice might be between him and Indiana Governor Mike Pence. Certainly, I'm one of the people who'll be sitting by the phone waiting. The presumptive GOP nominee huddled with Gingrich as well as Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions in Indianapolis Wednesday. The meetings came after Trump and his three eldest children met privately with Governor Pence at his mansion. I think he's giving it uh, very careful consideration, and, uh, uh, and, and we're humbled to be a part of that. A new poll finds Trump gaining ground on Hillary Clinton in several key swing states, including Florida and Pennsylvania. In Illinois yesterday, the presumptive Democratic candidate continued to paint herself as a unifier, delivering an address from the same location where Abraham Lincoln made his famous House Divided speech. Donald Trump is so dangerous. His campaign is as divisive as any we have seen in our lifetimes. Clinton has been eyeing Virginia Senator Tim Kaine as a potential VP. She'll campaign alongside him in his home state today. Brian Webb for CBS News. Ahead of the Virginia event, Hillary Clinton will also meet with Senate Democrats in Washington, a group likely to be filled with potential nominees. Meanwhile, Donald Trump will hold a series of fundraisers out in California. The family of Philando Castile says goodbye today to the Minnesota black man who was shot by a police officer during a traffic stop. Castile's funeral will be held at the century-old Cathedral of St. Paul. Castile was shot several times last week after telling an officer that he had a permit to carry a gun. The aftermath of that shooting was live-streamed by Castile's girlfriend, and it prompted national outrage. A candlelit vigil was held in Chicago last night to mark the one-year anniversary of the death of Sandra Bland, a black woman who died in a Texas jail cell after a traffic stop. Bland was found hanging in her cell three days after a Texas state trooper pulled her over. A medical examiner ruled it a suicide. Dash cam video of her arrest and the circumstances of her death provoked national outrage. Parts of the Midwest are recuperating from some severe weather. Some residents in parts of northwestern Wisconsin are stranded after some major roadways were washed out. This is just one of the many roads destroyed by floodwaters. One man who lives beside this flooded out creek says the waterway tripled in size in just a matter of minutes. Between the rain on the roof and you could just hear a roar. And I had a pretty good stream of water running right across the end of my driveway, so I didn't actually realize that the river was this high. The National Weather Service says more flooding is likely in northern Wisconsin, where rivers and creeks will continue to rise over the next two days. 
The time is 618. Homes that went into foreclosure during the housing crisis are now skyrocketing in value. The real estate website Zillow says foreclosed homes have nearly doubled in value. They're appreciating faster than other homes. AT&T says it may have a solution to bad cell service at packed venues like a concert or sporting event. The company is trying out a drone program. It wants to fly drones with cell service overhead to provide additional signal. Tesla is rolling out a cheaper version of its Model X SUV. Of course, cheaper is a relative term. Uh, the new less expensive Model X starts at $74,000, but with a federal tax rebate that comes down to about $66,000. It has an estimated driving range of 200 miles on a full charge. The Chinese government is thought to have hacked into computers of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, also known as the FDIC, in 2010, 2011, and 2013. A congressional report says the breach included the workstation of the FDIC chairwoman, Sheila, Blair, Sheila Bayer. The FDIC insures bank deposits and keeps confidential information on about 9,000 banks and savings and loans. Finally, fewer airlines offering discounted fares to people who are going to a family member's funeral. The Delta and Alaska Airlines are the only major airlines that still offer bereavement fares. All right, interesting. Time this morning is 6:19. WKYT this morning is just getting started. It's so good to have you with us. David Cameron is out as UK's Prime Minister, but believe it or not, the big news is being upstaged by another Downing Street occupant. One with whiskers. <laughs> we'll show you that coming up on WKYT this morning. We do have some storms on the way. We're looking back toward the west, and here comes some more rain into the forecast. I'm going to show you when I expect those to move on in. Coming up next. Welcome back in to WKYT this morning, 623 right now. Friends of a missing northern Kentucky couple are organizing another search effort to find their remains this morning. And that's what's trending at this hour. Robert Jones and Crystal Warner were last seen leaving a Washington County cabin on July 3rd. Friends say the couple were active in Jeep clubs in the Cincinnati area. Many of those club members are now organizing a new search with the help of state police. Other friends say they will be searching in Clark County this weekend. They'll be setting up at the Mount Zion Christian Church, searching along the Combs Ferry Road area. That is to start around 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. We continue to follow an overnight shooting in eastern Kentucky. It happened on Pope Hill Road off Kentucky 72 in Harlan County about 1.30 this morning. At last check, dispatchers say the man who was shot was still alive. We've also learned a woman was taken into police headquarters for questioning. They have not said exactly what led to the shooting at this point. Some thunder and lightning overnight and a little damage in the Lexington area, but uh, tomorrow, today is going to be uh, pretty interesting as well. Here's Micah. Yeah, we're going to have another shot at some storms rolling on through. We did have a couple of rumbles of thunder late last night, right around 10 p.m. to about 1 a.m. These storms move on in, and they were pretty strong. Only an isolated severe cell was mixed in here and there. Uh, but for the most part, definitely some heavy rain, some strong winds out of that, and also a lot of lightning. And guess what? We're going to have it all over again for today as this travels on through the daylight hours. Actually, day yesterday was almost fully dry. Many of us did not have rain until the nighttime hours, and it's just those waves we've been talking about the past couple of weeks. Here comes another one. It's going to be diving on in here. I do expect that to cross over the river, at least close to Louisville area, uh, just right around 8 a.m. So there is a chance as we go through the morning hours to actually have a few rumbles of thunder. However, I do expect the afternoon to be a better shot of actually some of these thunderstorms sliding on in. That's the bulk of the action where strong storms are absolutely likely, but severe weather is also a possibility too, guys. Okay, so some things to watch. Bluegrass Fair opening up oh, yeah. later today. So, you know, you just kind of want They're hoping for good weather. Yeah, see where we are, yeah. you know, as you're heading out there, right? Well, the U.S. Navy has released incredible video of an aviation accident aboard the USS Eisenhower. As a Hawkeye radar aircraft comes in for a landing, the arresting cable used to haul the speeding plane snaps, sending the aircraft careening off of the deck. Amazingly, the pilot made a last second recovery wow. and the plane did not splash down. The Navy wow. chalked the incident up to human error, but it uh, certainly is uh, interesting Woo. to see there. And uh, the pilot's uh, quick action there in keeping it. Hoping not from to going go right into, into that water. water. Woo. Well, all right.
Prime Minister David Cameron's departure from office is one of the biggest stories in the UK right now, and yet it's a cat who's uh, getting, we'll say, the lion's share of all the yes, press right now. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Larry the cat, who holds the title of Downing Street's chief mouser, has officially upstaged the exiting Prime Minister after the press confirmed that even with Cameron's departure, Larry will be staying at Downing Street. Nice digs, Larry. <laughs> Media camped out in front of the residence Wednesday morning, waiting for a glimpse of the presumed next Prime Minister, Theresa May. Instead, they got an eyeful of Larry, who just sprawled himself out on the curb, possibly to gloat about his contract <laughs> extension. <laughs> Very cute. Don't worry, though. Cameron tweeted a pic of himself with Larry to prove there's no hard feelings. Larry tweeted back his own Twitter page. Yes, he is. Okay, I can't even say this. I mean, come on now. Come on now. You what? gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me about that. Hi. One? <laughs> well, you know, the Prime Minister also did a little, nice little hum as he was exiting as well, which I thought was very Monty right. Python of him. Exactly. But Larry the Cat <laughs> certainly loves the attention, yes. it looks like, right? Yes, All right. Does. Our time this morning is 6.27 on WKYT This Morning. We're back in just a moment. Myers is bringing nearly 100 jobs to its Lexington area stores. Find out when they'll be taking applications. Coming up along with all of our top stories at 6.30. Before we go, Saturday's Powerball jackpot 333 million. Tomorrow's is 20 million.